Now, you'll obviously have heard the expression, dead as a dodo, and indeed the poor old thing is extinct and has been for a few hundred years. Gone, but not forgotten. In fact, the most important dodo specimen in the world is in this country, and it's long been assumed to have led a peaceful life before dying of natural causes and being put on display in a museum. But new research from the University of Warwick has revealed a much darker fate. Here's our science correspondent, David Gregory Kumar. In the Oxford University Museum of Natural History, kept under lock and key, the most complete set of remains anywhere in the world of a dodo, a mummified foot and a head. The Oxford dodo is really important in scientific terms because you can use this soft tissue to actually do DNA analysis of the dodo itself. But the Oxford dodo is also famous in its own right because this was the dodo that inspired Lewis Carroll to put a dodo into Alice in Wonderland. Now for the first time researchers at WMG at the University of Warwick have been using the latest scanning technology to study the specimen. But it's not easy, not least because of the massive volume of data created. This is a huge file size, so we're talking something along the lines of five HD films per scan. So overall you're looking at 50 odd HD films. Um, so it really is quite a lot of data to deal with. And all that new data revealed a shocking secret. After nearly four centuries of study, for the first time we've learned the Oxford dodo didn't die of natural causes. It was shot. And what you can see here, this, these green areas, the dense material, this, this is actually the physical shot embedded inside the skull of the dodo from behind. So as it was a flightless bird, it was obviously someone's come behind the bird and, and shot it. Somebody crept up behind it? <laughs> yes. But this discovery does leave the museum and the researchers with the opportunity to learn even more about the most important dodo specimen in the world. And also, about the people who shot it. We may be able to trace which particular ore field the, the lead came from and therefore what country it was mined in and potentially what country the shot was made in so that uh, we could then determine who killed the dodo. These scans contain so much data, it'll be five years before computers are powerful enough to really get to grips with it. The Oxford dodo may well have more secrets to surrender. And David is here right now. As you can imagine, some unkind people who work here mm. and they've likened dodos to my presenting style. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Anyway, that apart, why did they die out? Well, we used to think the dodos were big, fat, sort of waddly, ungainly birds, quite slow, and that all these Dutch sailors on Mauritius basically turned up and had them for Sunday lunch. But the Oxford dodo, this specimen, and this work is part of this, has changed how we think about dodos. We now think they were slimmer, quite nimble, and it wasn't the sailors that did for them on Mauritius, it was the animals they brought with them, the rats and the cats. The dodo had no natural defences against them. They're invasive species, not seen before, and they basically went for the young and the eggs, and that's what did for the dodo. So why is it that all we have left is a foot and a head? Yes. After the dodo was gone, we didn't really pay much attention or really look after what was left either. It's not a great story, it has to be said. So there were live specimens. When they died, they were stuffed. It was very early on in the days of taxidermy. Uh, they didn't really last. They rotted. And that's why what's left in terms of tissue is this foot and this mummified head. But the good news is it's not much, but Warwick is <coughs> helping us do something about it. There's a lot more on the blog at bbc.co.uk slash David Gregory Kumar. It's a little bit sad, isn't it? It is. A David, bit sad. thank you.